Hi. Um, in this slide, I'm actually going to kick off a, a bit of a, a, a new subtopic, and I do want to apologize about my previous clip talking about looking at specific extra services. Uh, I'm going to postpone that to the next section uh, where we take an in-depth look at, uh, at line item uh, profit analytics case studies because the extra services do come up there. Um, so taking off on a new tangent here, about the role of the outside rep is changing and will always change. Uh, we talked about a lot, uh, we touched on this a lot in the very first uh, uh, section where we were talking about uh, the need for uh, sales reps now to become supply chain, service value chain fluent as far as the building blocks. And that now we're not just selling product, but we have to sell a, a, a service value solution that meets service chain uh, objectives. Um, and uh, in the second section, we talked about how as the life cycle of, a, of an industry and the products within the industry change, so does the type of interface creature that, that takes, takes care of that change. Um, and part of it is not only the shifting needs of the customer as far as what they economically value, but also it just has to do with the simple uh, cost and productivity of, of what the individual's doing. For example, if we think about, uh, you know, milkmen that used to call on us back in the 50s, um, you, know, you can remember, if anybody's old enough, you can remember who they were and what they did, but as the cost of milkmen can continue to go up and the trucks and the insurance and all that sort of stuff uh, and other alternative distribution channels were getting fresher, fresher milk at a lower, lower cost, at the supermarket where you had to go anyway to get everything. It would seem sort of silly to buy your, your milk dairy products from a milkman at twice the price that you'd be walking by at the grocery store when you went there later in the day. Um, so because there wasn't any way for these people to drive faster and deliver more quicker and so forth, they just economically disappeared and we, we in a sense did it ourselves, just like we started to pump our own gas. Um, or. Circuit City used to have commission sales reps jumping on us and telling us how to buy a VHS piece of equipment. It used to be very expensive and we never had bought one before. But as the life cycle turned it into a commodity, we really just wanted to go to Best Buy where there was a much bigger store with more choices and we didn't have people jump, jumping on us with double suction cups trying to sell us stuff we didn't want. We just wanted to be able to go talk to a guy in a blue polo shirt about a question if we had one. Um, so Circuit City struggled and disappeared. Best Buy ascended, and now Best Buy is struggling because uh, uh, how iPads and, and iPhones are being sold and so forth, uh, and the life cycle of, of high definition TVs has been saturated, and the prices have dropped. There are a lot of things that are causing Best Buy now to, to try to rethink their their business model. We saw earlier where Sam Walton back in 1988 said, "Look, I don't want to see any product pushing reps." It's not that I don't want to have a sales marketing interface. I, I just need to see supply chain vice presidents who are who can get what my next issue is, which is is making quick response work, and they're empowered to do what they have to do to make that work. So he really was asking for a different kind of of customer interface agent, if you will. So. Um, this is changing. When we look at the, the sheer cost and productivity of outside salespeople, uh, to, to appear at a customer's place, we don't drive any faster. We get there, we don't talk any faster, but the cost keeps going up. And if we look at the cost per average sales call at the distribution level, uh, it's probably about $100 a, a call, maybe a little bit it's more or less, depending if it's a rookie or a veteran kind of thing. And if we wanted to have a minimum of a, one call a month or 12 per year, actually 10 for vacations and so forth, and we wanted to keep the, the, the $100 a month calling on a customer cost at, say, 20% of the margin dollar coming from the customer, we'd need $500 in margin per month from a customer to support an outside sales call. But then if we looked at how much sales volume we need on an annual basis, it would be 18000 to $25,000 a year in sales to give us the, the $4,800 or $5,000 in margin that we need to support the sales uh, call. And that means that the, the number of accounts salespeople can call on is shrinking. But, and at the same time, what they go in to sell, not 
commodity products, but how do I sell the products to you and through you at the lowest supply chain cost is shifting. So now we're selling service value solutions because 90% of what our customers buy are commodities. Um, so what kind of new sales organization are we going to need? If we need maybe fewer total salespeople calling on those 20,000 20, and up accounts, how do we keep our very best guys get them all assigned to the to the to the right accounts and then what kind of additional assistance do we give them to be able to make them service value solution providers as opposed to product pushers um, when it comes to selling target accounts uh, that are whales very large progressive customers uh, it's it's more difficult to crack an account profitably than it is to take care of an account that's in the in the habit of buying from us so we need you know on a scale from one to ten we sort of like need tens they're going to go out there and 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 do something special and I call that dome selling and we're going to dome sell systems to whales so we need you know sort of special elite guys to, to make this happen. So we're going to look at, at, I put these things in red because I'm going to unpack these and, and describe them in greater detail in the slides that follow. Thank you.